Uh, welcome back, YouTube. Hopefully, you figured out that uh, I had to stop the other video and start a new one. Uh, this is just a continuation of the other video. That's all they are. In fact, I probably will do that more frequently and just put them on the playlist. You can just play them in order. Um, just to, to make things easier to upload. Um, yeah, we, we had to stop the stream there. All right, so as you'll remember... Uh, if, if this is the first time you're in a video, let me just, just the regular, the re regulatory, uh, regular disclaimers really quickly. Number one, this is a long, wi a winding co-working video. Number two, uh, we're all over the place. We change our minds all the time. And sometimes we swear, not much, but sometimes. Um, three, if, if you're a beginner, it's probably better for you to go do the beginner boost Saturdays at 11 a.m. My time, Eastern time, New York time in America. Uh, you can go to skillstack.io, S-K-I-L-S-T-A-K.io, where you can go read all about that. Um, I will not be answering questions and dealing with stuff that's off topic uh, as much as possible. I, I'm obviously going to be making jokes and stuff the whole time uh, or throwing random people under the bus that I don't like. That's <laughs> just how these streams go. But um, but just know that. So, so, you know, you can always go there. Uh, and that's all I have to say. If there's any problem with the sound you're coming in, if, if you want to join us for the live sessions, just come on in to twitch.tv uh, slash rwxrob or rwxrob.tv should get you there as well. Uh, and there, that's the beginning of every VOD that I do here. We, as a last, uh, last we were working on the open, open SSL certificates. Uh, we're using the open SSL tool. We went through the man page and, and, and got really frustrated by the end of it, including, you know, throwing Mark Andreas under the bus for doing Netscape shit that broke the specification and forced them to put specific things into the specification just to account for broken uh, Netscape technology, which has plagued our world for the last... And about that time, I spilled my wine because I was so mad. <laughs> Not really. It was another reason. And then I, I had to go through and fix my soundboard. Uh, so before I, you know, give in and use something like CFSSL, we're going to go ahead and finish OpenSSL using this configuration file, which we have found from uh, this wonderful tutorial uh, from, who wrote it? Flexlabs.org, apparently, 2019. So that's the, that's the tutorial we're using right now. And uh, uh, I have got to remind myself how to, how to do certs, and I've never done a root CA. So that's where we are. Uh, so we're going through the change me things. It appears... We went through the whole man page, and it's still a couple things are still unclear. For example, it's still unclear if the dollar, um, if the dollar dir, uh, like substitutions are going to be taken to being something up above, and I assume so, even though that is not documented in the man page. Um, so we're going to keep that as is. Uh, we're going to follow this other configuration as suggested by the tutorial. Uh, again, the goal being to create our own root CA. Uh, so that we can sign intermediate certificates and add those certificates to Keycloak so then we can then run Klogin and make our own tool to do uh, token generation that can then be used for authentication with Kubernetes. Uh, the, root key and, uh, the root key and root certificates, private key, uh, root key, certificate, search, root cert. we're going to keep those uh, as is. Uh, for certificate revocation lists, hmm, we're going to keep all of this, actually. Um, okay, SHA-1 is deprecated. You SHA-2. Yeah, that was that happened a long time. It makes me wonder if we should actually change that. I, I, think, I think that you can use more than 512. Yeah, let's actually do some research on that. Uh, best open SSL value for... I think that you can use other algorithms. Actually, there's even more than 512 now. And I just want to know which one would be used good for that. Uh, what is the public key default MD? 10, MD stands for the message digest, open SSL version 1.1. The default digest is a SHA-256. That's crap, don't use that. Um, unknown digest SHA-512. Looks like I have a couple, a little bit of information about this. Let's do some research. Um, Let's see, open SSL, default MD, public. Hmm. And you just decided to digest mode by open SSL digest command can be used. But what's the best one to use, right? Shout 256 is not good. Um, RSA 2048 is good if you're going to use RSA. 
Um, Serum so shot with RSA encryption. Just wanted to note OpenSSL 1.0 has shot 26. We don't want that. The default hash used by JS command did change completely separate. Uh, this is this is a question I need to ask security professionals about. Wish we had Tony Fire here for this. I'll have to ask him when I see him next. The default hash key for the CA509. That doesn't really have any info. Let's look at this one. Um, digest commands. We're using SHA-512, which apparently is the biggest. Actually, this might be dated. Let's go check. So, open SSL. What did it say? List digest commands. So we've got SHA 512, 256, uh, SHA 512, 324. And that must be. Hmm. Blake is a new thing that wasn't there before. We also have SHA 3 and SHA 512. SHA 512 is supported, so that might be dated, but. Let's keep that. Um, yeah. Uh, it was the false size and bits. Small accepted key size of 512. It's to specify 24 years of use. What? When did that start? This is something new. Uh, digest. Looking for the digest stuff. Let's see. Key. It specifies a message digest to use. And so the digest algorithm specified. Always use SHA-1. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, it's not particularly immediate relevant to what we're doing, so... But I don't want to have to remake a CA later. I, I probably will, but anyway. For SSL Rex, some of the default values. Um, show 256, we're not going to do that. Um, I, I think we have enough to proceed, okay? I don't, I don't want to do more than that. Yep. Okay, so we're going to do... We're doing... Uh, SHA 2512 appears to be the highest of all of them, so we'll keep that. Um, name up CA default, default days 1825. I don't know why that is there. Preserve no policy, policy strict, copy extensions, copy. Uh, the CA should only be, should only sign intermediate certificates that rematch. See the policy format section of Man CA. Yep, we did that. So, match data province optional. Uh, look at any match, match, organization, and match, organization. This is going to match the local host. Uh, common name, supply email address, optional. Okay. Uh, request, request for the rec dual. Default bits 40, 20, distinguish name. Stream as UTF 8 only. Screw Metscape. Mm. Use uh, default MD. We already did that, so why is that showing up again? Was this, uh, oh, is this under the CA default? So, okay. So, and this is under the request token. Okay, okay, different different thing. Extension to add when using X509 uh, V3 CA. Okay. Uh, rec distinguished name. Uh, country GB London. Yeah, it changes to US. Locality, America. Um, I think it's America. Open SSH locality name for US or America. I think I could go probably just look at another cert, but I don't know. Let's do that. Um, 
Let's see. Oh, what is the locality for Rebecca? Uh, um, move this a quick wrap. C equals U.S. State equals Columbus. Interesting. Uh, locality is Columbus. Huh. TLS default values for distinguished name. I mean, it doesn't, I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, this is interesting. Let's add this. Um, so public country name, U.S. and C. State. Is the state the locality? I think it might be. I think the the fault city, locality name. Interesting. Um, I mean, Davidson. I'll put Davidson. Common name. What is the state name? Is that one? Require distinguished name. I I think the. Uh, There's a state name. What is that? What is that though? What is that going to be? So, organizational name. Um, um, I don't know if I should do Artibix Rob or Skill Stack. I'm just going to do Artibix Rob. Um, common name. Um, I don't know what the CA is. Um, RDX Rob CA. State or province? Thanks, LBG. Um, province name. State or province name. Uh, NC Davidson. I mean, strictly speaking, I don't have that stuff, but whatever. Where is the country not here? Hmm. Never mind. Uh, organization name. CA stands for the CA. The common name is already baked. Rob underscore CA. Um, email address. This is public information, so I don't care. So... Okay, uh, we got the V3 CA extension for typical CA. Uh, we already looked this stuff up. Hash is equals to critical. C it's a CA and it's critical. So this is what we get for a root CA only. Uh, critical digital signature or CLR sign, CQC or sign critical. We want to be able to sign stuff, obviously, otherwise the CA is useless. Um, B3 intermediate CA. So this is for the CA and this is for intermediate CA. Extensions for a typical intermediate CA. Um, but this is a root CA. So I guess this is a different type that, that we'll be using in our config file when we want to make that type of cert. Um, authority ID key identifier key ID always assure. Basic constraints critical, C equals true, path length. It is a C. Okay, so that answers the question I had earlier. Is um, when companies spam me chats. I said zero, one, two. Multiple values, really. Mm. All right, so. This this confirms my suspicion that an intermediate CA is indeed a CA. So CA true is the is the um, extension value. Path length only equals zero. Key usage critical. Digital signature CLR sign same as the CA. Um, the only difference, actually, there is none in that case. So yeah, that's uh, uh for doing stuff. Authority key identifier key ID always. OCSP false. Okay. 
So this is for certificates in, down in the usage kind of area. And we are, they are not CAs. So CA is false. Uh, subject key identifier equals hash. Uh, authority key identifier equals key ID. The, the hash is using the digest MD algorithm that is probably I specified, I'm guessing. Authority key identifier, key ID. Issuer, key usage critical digital signatures only. This is just for signing shit. Um, extended key usage critical and OCSB signing. Okay, this is cool. I am glad we went through that because I this is one of those things where I think you just kind of have to go with one that someone else has already made because there's no way I would get that right on the first try if I was doing it by myself. There's just no way. Um, all right, so back to the tutorial. It says uh, after you've gone through all those, what, this is the wrong one. So, once everything's configured, we can, we can create our private key and root cert. Uh, don't forget to adjust the file names. In my case, I created a root CA with an expiration of 25 years. You can always pull back a cert using, uh, even if you don't want it to be value, like if it got compromised, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure of that. So if you wanted to make it expire in 25 years, but you wanted to pull it after a year because it got they got the secrecy got invalidated or something, you could do that. That's the whole that's the whole point of the of that being able to pull it. So I don't think there's a problem with that. I don't. I'm not sure of that, but I'm pretty sure there's not a problem with that. So then we do the open SSL command to uh, we can create our private key and root certificate. So. Uh, I'm actually going to copy this uh, gen RSA. This must make us a private key. Yeah. Um, I'm going to document this. Yeah, I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put... Uh, actually, that should go in here um i don't want any of that stuff on there anymore um okay so the first step was uh steps to Uh, full steps from private CA part one. Um, so we uh, uh customize open SSL dot CSR CSL. What is it? CNF. CNF uh, from template. Um, and then uh, generate private key. So I mean Okay. How's it going? Elephaz boy. So we're going to do that. I'm documenting it in my lab so that I have the steps for later so I don't lose them. And uh, enter pem passphrase. I don't know if we're going to have one of those. Um. Let's see here. Enter passphrase for private key. Verifying enter passphrase for root. I don't know if we need one. If if we actually have a pen password, is it going to force it to be entered every time the key is used? It looks like they just put enter on theirs.
it doesn't say specifically. Yeah. Do I need a PEM passphrase on an open SSL root CA? I suppose the answer is no. CAs don't have to access the client's private key and so will not use this. Instead, the pass in parameter refers to the CA's private key. Open SSL rec, click in client, SCSR, CA, blah, blah, blah. Pass in, pass. Spec password out. Um, this is a good question. I don't. I want to get a definitive answer here. We're not doing X509. We're making a private key. The private key is going to be used to sign the thing. So I don't think it's necessary. It's only going to be necessary. I mean, I could put it on there, but it's definitely not going to be used during any of the X509 validation. It's only going to be used to sign the CA. So, right? I guess that's my best guess. So, I actually think I could put a passphrase on if I wanted to remember it, right? Um, but if I want to, this is just for lab, so I'm probably okay to not mess with it. So, we're going to go enter, just enter here. And uh, you must type in four to 24 characters. Interesting. Huh. Um, a S fifty six, and why is it doing RSA? I thought we didn't want to do RSA, especially not to A S fifty six. It's not a good algorithm. I I'm questioning this tutorial right now. I think it might be a little dated. It was twenty nineteen. Uh, twenty forty eight. Oh, never mind. It's twenty forty. That's that's longer. Good. Thank God. Um. Yeah. Open SSL, gen RSA, AS56 out private key root. Oh, wait, what's this? That was like on a Windows machine. <laughs> Enter. Um, I don't think there is a private. Wait, what is the private slash thing? Private root dot key. Did it make it? It looks like it did. That's weird. That this that must have been run on a Windows machine, which is terrifying. That I'm reading a, a, an open SSL tutorial done on a Windows machine. Yeah, that's that that kind of shit scares me. Um. So, ugh. I don't know. We're gonna try it again. We'll try it again, and uh, I'll give it a password. Verifying enter payment password. Um, Windows with the backslash. I know, weird, huh? I know. Yay! There's our encrypted private key. Oh no! Now you know my root CA private key. Here, take a screenshot so you can own me. So you can, you can, you can own me. <laughs> File private uh, key root key, ASCII text key. Okay. Uh, hurry, take a screenshot. You can sign your own keys. Um. Anyway, so the private key includes the public key. Uh, some people don't know that. It might have to be worth mentioning. Uh, okay, and then and then they're making the uh. Oh, and then they're and I see. So they are. They did put a passphrase on it. Okay, that makes sense. And that's what I was saying. I was suggesting that having a password is not going to prevent the the cert from actually working. It's just it's just the thing you use to create the cert in the first place. So that's actually probably good. Um, so open open SSL. We're going to request using this configuration. Uh, why are they doing OpenSSL.conf? Why are they not doing the CNF thing? I think that's a typo. Hmm. My my trust is going down. That's the CNF file instead of the CONF. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this tutorial's value is is starting to fade. 
is going to be finding errors in it. I sit you, you know, primary errors. This says you can copy my comp file, but it says openssl.conf, and then in the file it says rename it to CNF. So, yeah. I'm not particularly confident that this is good. But I'm going to use it for now. Again, uh, the primary task here is not to learn everything about OpenSSL. All right, so... Now, my, my question is, is it going to pick it up? And I think it is because we're going to pass it in as a, as a parameter. That's what this tutorial suggests. Yeah, config. It's, it's passing the config files. My config file name doesn't matter. Um, all right. So so this command from OpenSSL is the most important one so far. This one, it, We're not just generating a private key. We're actually making a new... Um, uh, we're requesting a new X509 certificate... Uh, that is a CA, which is based on the extension V300 score CA, which we defined in OpenSSL.conf. And we are going to sign it with the authenticated private key uh, as defined under private slash root key. Forget that they're doing it on Windows as a backslash. And we want the output to be root.crt um, and to tell how many days to do it. Okay, so that that command we can um, we can kind of share here. In fact, I can just copy and paste that specific command for the most part so I can get it right. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. I want to type it. It'll make me learn it more. So, open SSL. Uh, let me see if I can guess this. So, we want a rec. We want to request a new certificate. And we want to use a config file. I'm just looking to form out of our arguments here. So, we want openssl.conf. We want to do a new and then tell it what type of thing we want. Uh, dash x509, uh, which is the standard for SSL and TLS. And we want to invoke the extension that has been documented in OpenSSL.conf called v3 underscore CA, which defines a certificate authority, not an intermediate, not an end, end, end thing, uh, working, whatever, extensions. So extensions, can't see my screen. Um, v3 underscore CA. And then uh, we're going to use this key to do the signing. Uh, so the steps, the first step was to create the private key uh, and then to do the signing with the private key. And I named it what root.crt. And then um, how many days for it to be valid? Now that's the requested uh, X509 cert. And we're going to put 25 years because I know that you can uh, revoke a certificate even if you put an expiration, that that's, that that's not long. And so that should not be getting us into too much trouble. Days, there we go. So that should do everything. Let's just file directory, providers, implementation, semifile, file, file store, calling, stat, blah, blah, blah. Um... Can I open file or UI for loading private key from private root CRT? Oh, I call that root.key. Again, there's a mis Oh, they call it root key too. I, I just made a mistake. Key. All right. Passphrase for the root key. A super secret password. Oh, no. There's my cert. Hey, there's my root cert, everybody. Take a screenshot. <laughs> okay, it's my root CA. I'm sure everybody take a screenshot. Oh, my God. Uh, I, you know, it didn't write it anywhere. I hope it did actually. Um, I, di I didn't redirect it. I don't know if they did either. Did they? Did they redirect it? Uh, no, they didn't. <coughs> they didn't tell it where to write it. Oh, yes, they did. They put out root.crt. So do we have a root.crt? I must have forgot the out. I did. And then I doxed my root CA. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, don't do that if it matters. Don't 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 stream the creation of your root C A. Bad idea. <laughs> See, but we're doing it for fun. Root C R T. Boom. Damn it. Did I type my password wrong? I did. <laughs> oh, joy of joys. We now have a root certificate. There it is. All right. So we're getting, we're making progress here on this little thing. Um, now we need to create the intermediate CA and then that's going to be signing off the, the, the search we're going to use for everything else. I actually only need the root. Actually, I need the intermediate CA. Uh, and then I'm going to need to put the root CA in the keys chain on this local machine in order for uh, the Golang Crypto Libraries to get the right thing. Um, creating intermediate CA is similar. A fair initialize the folder structure at these files. Uh, root interim. All right, so so that is the end of the root CA. Um, you know what I, I find fascinating, though, is that... Uh, Oh, this stuff all went in root CA. I see. Yeah. All right. So let's make a, a directory called. Uh, I'm going to follow their little recommendation. Interim immediate. And same thing. It's funny because these, all the CRL and request stuff we don't need. I don't know why we don't need it. We just don't. And all right, oh, so we're making a key. We already have an extension for this. I almost can guess what the command is going to be. So we're going to need to make a private key to sign the intermediate, and then we're going to need to sign the intermediate. So, so that is going to be similar. Uh, so you need a configuration file. Note that the intermediate CA doesn't have to be the same as the root CA. Uh, in my case, there are a number of differences. You can use my intermediate personal as a percent. We already did that. I thought we already did this. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. We need to go back to... Uh, where is that? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Hi, what's up? They were in the box with the dog food the whole time. Nice. Um, so, my wife thinks she doesn't know that I ordered them. That's why they were there. Okay, so, let's go back. Um, I'm trying to figure out where we wrote that. Oh, here it is. It's a private CA template. This is, uh, uh, I'm going to use capitals just to remind me that this is his template. And open SSL intermediate comp. Now, uh, I mean, it's got, the, the thing I find interesting here is they didn't need to have a different configuration file because it's using the extensions. So I feel like that's a fundamental misunderstanding of how this file works. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but you see how it's got all the CA stuff in it here. And, 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 uh, oh wait, here we go. State problem organizational name. These things are all the same. So I think you know, user cert. Just search smart. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This has a lot of extra extenders usages. Yeah. Um, interesting. I, I, I feel like these extensions could have been written in the same configuration file. That's what I think. But I don't know that for sure. So, so yeah. Uh, and this, this intermediate is probably going to have IP numbers in it. 
not IBM domains. I'm guessing. No, maybe that's the the final one. I don't know. We'll find out. So, serial number, interim serial. Um, default CA equals CA default. That's the one we've already made. Um. Oh my God! Somebody's making lots of noise outside. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, name op cert CA default. See, what I don't understand is why this has an identical CA default section to the other one. And I, I feel like they could have used the OpenSSL config for both. Uh, and I, I feel like that's a misunderstanding of how this file works. But I'm brand new to the file, so um, I don't know. Um, because there's a lot of overlap. Require a distinguished name. Request a distinguished name. Um, it just has a locality name. Does not have a province in it. User cert. So this is, I think the user cert, I think what we're going to see in the tutorial, actually, my bet is that they're going to have us do the command. They're going to make the private key, which we do no matter what. And then we sign. I actually don't need to do that. I can sign. I'm pretty sure I can sign this using the other private key. I don't understand why I have to sign the interim with its own private key. I feel like I could have got away with signing that with the private key from the root CA. Uh, no, that's not how it would work in the wild, though. In the wild, the interim CAs would be owned by other people. So they would have to create their own private keys to sign them. So that's that's probably not a good thing to do, even though I can do it in this case. So, so enter passphrase for private interim key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's opening the same. It's opening a different OpenSSL comp file, uh, and requesting a an X509 cert. Actually, it's not requesting an X509 cert. That's interesting. So it's requesting a key. I know that's authenticating the key. It's re what is it requesting? A request config open SSL. It's not an X509. That's very interesting. I wonder why that is. Um, with your CRAC creator, we're going back to our CA and we'll sign this request. Oh, it's a request. We're just making a request. Oh, we're just making a request for a certificate and that has to be signed. I forgot about that. So the CA gets requests. This all happens dynamically on Let's Encrypt. The CA gets a gets a request for a certificate that has to be signed by the the, the institution that's just doing the requesting for the intermediate, in this case the intermediate cert. And then the CA says, yes, here you go. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. That makes much more sense to me. So a lot of that stuff is going to be the same, but not so we'll cover that over to home whatever and um we'll go back uh over here what's going on over here why am i getting client loop problems again that's stupid ass that's wsl crapping out again i hate it i i have i said how much i hate wsl um okay so so, so, so yeah, so we got our interim made and we can actually, let's do this. Let's copy, uh, open interim to open SSL .com. Um, and there's going to be some things in here that are the same. In fact, assuming these are the same, we can, oh, that's got an OID section. That's new. Let's, let's stiff these. Um, okay, let's just look off. Um, all right, so I'm just looking at how close these actually are. Um, let's, uh, I, I for the sake of knowledge i just want to look um we're going to use the same names 
I, I see why, the, the, even though we have it, a subdirectory that's separate, that if the files get separated from that, it's probably important to have that there. So I agree with that. I'm going to change all this to my own stuff in a second. The rest of the stuff is pretty dramatically different. So let's just have a look. Yeah, there's one that has a root key, one has a uh, interim key. Interim CRL, so just name changes there. Policy loose, that's interesting. Unique subject, no. Uh, interesting, ensure that you're blah, blah, blah. Uh, allow the intermediate CA to sign up more diverse range certificates. Oh, wow. Okay, so, so this has match instead of optional. Interesting. Okay, 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 okay. That's, that's important. Okay, that allows it to sign other things. Um, however, we can still put the same information uh, in, the, in the other one. Right? Uh, so, 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 yeah. Now this this is where this thing if we're gonna if we're gonna simulate this we would probably put something else here rather than have an intermediate sort that has the same common name identifier um, and rather than putting my company name there I would put um, something else I don't know what um, it's because we're 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 this is we're emulating an intermediate um, CA. So I'm going to say ICA. Or, I mean, what is it called? Um, is it called interim? Yeah, any, uh, let's, uh, let's actually cheat and grab most of that stuff from here. Uh, CA open cert. US. Um, Grab those lines and put them in here. Uh, it should be. All right. So how is ours going to be different? Country name. Locality name. State or province name. Yes. Organization name. Company name. Common name. Artivix Rob uh, ICA. Um, I think I actually have to type that every time. So I don't want to put that in there. Um, and it's the same email address. So, so yeah. Um, yeah. That stuff all gets added together to make a distinguished name for the certificate. Um, that's unique. Uh, what else do we have in here? The rest of the stuff is the same. Let's actually look at the basic constraint CA false. It is absolutely not a CA. Now I misjudged the other thing, thinking that was going to be the config the configuration for the intermediate CA. In, in fact, it wasn't. That's why both of the CAs were true there. Uh, and as we see, the CAs are false in every case here because this is not a CA by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it is the default CA, but it is not the root CA. All right. So, uh, UNC Davidson, um, false hash key, key ID, issue ID, authority key identifier, key usage critical non-repudiation. It has a lot more options here. Digital signature and key cipher. So this is designed to be kind of used out in the wild CD for doing for CA for everything. Um, basic constraints CA false. Uh, subject identifier hash. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna keep these uh, extension for bit blocker encryption certificates. I don't know what that is. I probably have to add something here for Kubernetes that I don't know about. Yep. But I, I shouldn't have to at this stage because this stuff is very, very, very generic. Um, MS, code, com, NS. This is all the shit that we'd have to add from custom certificates and providers like Netscape and Microsoft. Um, 
it's just not an OCSB. Interesting. Okay. And you BitLocker. I don't know what BitLocker is. And why do I have that thing there? This this has got to be something for a specific application. I assume someone's using BitLocker or whatever the hell that is. Uh, let's go read the doc about that. I, I don't know if exact, they actually talk about that, but... Um, and the rest is the same. It's the same step. Uh, with your series creator, you're going back. Okay, so that we're just making a C... This is just making a CSR, and then we're going to get our actual certs out of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We need to, we need, first of all, we need a um, Windows encryption thingy. Yeah. Yeah. So that, this is all, it's a Windows tutorial, so that's probably why. Um, so open SSL, uh, request a. From the config file, open SSL.conf, a new, uh, using the private key, private interim. Oh, no, we need to make the private key first. Open SSL, uh, gen RSA, uh, AES, um, was it? AES 256 out, private key. Interim key. And so that's just generating a private key. And and then we can do the request. So actually we can go grab that other one. We already have it. Request config open SSL new X509. We don't want an X509. No, we want a CSR or a CSR or L, what is it called? A CS uh certificate request CSR service request I think it's certificate service requests right so we want a new key or a request I think that is a default type actually which is why it's not specified so a new key and we want the output to go into interim.csr okay so new we don't need an extension because it's not the CA I don't know why we skipped that extension but anyway we got a key. We need that. Um, we don't need the days. And that out is going to go to CSRs, which anytime we CRLs, why do we have a CRL and not a CSR? CA requests. Um, interim.csr. That's going to be temporary, actually. Uh, there we go. File. Requests interim CSR. What? What happened? Oh, did I put root key? Bad me. All right. There we go. Um, that is a PEM cert. PEM certificate request. Gosh, file really knows what that is. That's good. There's another thing. So this is a certified request to the CA to give us a key, a, a cert pair that we can then use in our application, I believe. Um, so the output below is from the immediate cert. Okay, so open SSL, rand out serial hex 20. Um... OpenSSL CA config OpenSSL extension v3 no text is out in terms cert user configuration from OpenSSL enter pass phrase blah 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 check that the request matches the signature okay so that's the request and then the thing that comes out of that is is the thing that we can put places I have a feeling I think that's the thing we can finally put into stuff we certified until May yes and uh, once the CA signs a certificate, it is also copied into the new search folder. Okay, so, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, 
All right, so out serial hex twenty. Why would it even do that? I don't understand that. I don't understand outputting to the serial interface. Uh, that's got to be a file. Oopsie. Nah. That's got to be a file. I don't know though. Man, open SSL. Out. Out, 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 out. It's nowhere to be found. What are you talking about? It's not even there. <sighs> Shit. Options. What are the standard options? This is why people don't use it. Info. Where is it? I can't figure out what it is. I don't know. I guess it's just the thing. I, I want to understand why it's doing that. Is it really a serial file? Okay. All right. Um. Open SSL Rand. That's got to be like a nonce or a hash or something. I mean, not a hash. It's just random data. I wonder. I wonder if it is this. That, that means Open SSL doesn't depend on Dev Rand or U Rand or something. And that must be what it's doing. It's ensuring that it has entropy to do it before it continues. Unlike SSH, when you're making keys and stuff. I'm guessing. Yeah. Uh, the question I have is: Is it binary data? Probably. Is I might screw up my, might screw my terminal up right now. But no. Wow. Interesting. Oh, because we put hex, of course. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so that's a function I can actually definitely use. Yeah. That's a really great function to know about, just in general, for shell scripting. Because that... I mean, you can... Look, you can do this. You can echo... You know, random, and I want to have a random number between 1 and whatever that is, right? So I can do that. I think you random numbers. That's like built into bash. But if I want like a big ass random string, I can use OpenSSL for that. And I don't have to cat, God, I wish I didn't know about that. I, I made a tool that does this. It's called unique and it, it actually does that very thing, but it uses the internal uh, stuff. I, I assume the OpenSSL is, is doing the, is using underlying U random or Z random. Do we know? I imagine, I imagine it is. I imagine that's what it's doing because I could probably do like hacks 100. Yeah. That, that is, that is, that is awesome. Just that one command. Uh, I need to put that in. Is that, um, I, I need to put that in. Is that right now? Uh, huh. Uh, use open SSL rand to generate uh, random text data. Yep. Um, open SSL rand serial out whatever I was buffoo. Hex a hundred. Um, since uh, 
on most things and uh, uh, Hexadecimal All right. Good good to know. All right. So So that generated that random number. I can use the 100 if I want. It just might make it make it forever take forever to do its thing. So we're back to 20. I uh, must be that must be a number that's defined somewhere I don't know where. Okay, so open SSL CA, it says, okay, have the CA do something. Um, and we're now back in the CA, so we can say open SSL CA, do stuff as CA. Uh, config, which it should read automatically, but it will not. Uh, open SSL config. We want to run the V. Oh, oh, I, this is making sense to me now. Okay, so those other sections in the root CA configuration are to or specified their instructions for the CA to do things with regard to requests for intermediate certificates and not creating the intermediate. Okay, this is starting to make more sense now because I forgot about the request step. So, okay, so, 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 uh, extensions. So extensions are kind of like subroutines, but not. Um, and wow, it actually knows it. That's cool. Tab completion. Um, no text, huh, um, in, and it's going to try to grab the CSR, which is not there, it's up above, um, wait, this tutorial is, is, is mixing stuff up, Yeah. I think I should have probably put the whole thing into a single place, but I didn't. It, it's it's just definitely a Windows person trying to use OpenSSL because they're they're not organizing their files very well. Um, but the commands I trust. Uh, no text. In. See, you can't get request intern.csr. It doesn't exist. That's up above. Uh huh. I'm gonna prove it. So, you know, when we made that, um, oh, never mind. Dot dot slash CA request. Okay, maybe I did that wrong. Did I not do it that way? I don't think I did it that way. That's my bad. That's my bad, of course. Um, yeah. Let me make sure I did this. I moved this to the right place. So the request has to go into the CA, so it should go into its in incoming directories, which is what the directories are. And let's check request. Request here should have something that it doesn't. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I misinterpreted that command line from the tutorial. Uh, and so I need to go to interim requests. So the request section in the interim is going to be requests for certificates that are signed by the intermediate CA. Not the root CA. All right. all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. This this is interesting. Okay, so move intermediate requests, uh, CRSLM into a request of the CA. All this stuff could be automated. I could actually make you know watchdogs that do the watch things. That's probably a way to go about it. I'm sure that's what less encrypt kind of thing is. So move the interim request or term CSR into the CA request directory. Okay, now the rest of that tutorial should make more sense now. Um, and that's, this is the part I did wrong right here. The part they did wrong is they use Windows. <laughs> All right, so, so again, uh, it's valuable to type it out so you can catch your own mistakes. Open SSL, so what are we doing? We're pretending we're the CA. The CA just got a request. It just came in, in the vacuum tube up to our level. 
And so we're going to do a something as a CA, certificate authority. And we're going to make sure we have the right config file. I'm, I'm trying to remember this stuff. Uh, we don't have to say what type of thing we're making um, or that we're doing something new because we're doing something as a CA. Uh, we're going to tell it to add the extensions uh, from tab tab from the uh, V3 intermediate CA. And, um, and, um, it's interesting because I, I think that the tab completion might be coming from the root, uh, names that exist in, in var or whatever, even though they're not being, cause it's not pulling up my open SSL that come from here. I doubt that very seriously. That just happens to be the same name. Um, yeah. So no text. I don't know what that does, but. At this point, I don't need to know. Um, incoming, incoming request from requests. Now we are cooking interim.csr. And then we're going to write it as an output to interim.crt. And we're going to generate a cert, uh, in our, put it in, our, in the CA's outbox. And then that will get shipped off. Doesn't display the full cert to stand out. Nice. Thank you. Uh, and and then we get in term in term uh, dot key. Why is it key? Oh, that's a private key. That's not it. It's a uh, CRT. Yeah, CRT, not CSR, which would be the request, right? And not. And so this is a cert. This is a cert. It's also probably a PEM file, I'm guessing. Um, it has a, a password file for the root key. And it was a file directory providers. Then I put CRT. What did I do wrong? Oh, it's supposed to be search, right? Yeah, I'm dumb. Certs dot out. Oh no, search dot in terms CRT is inbound. What is the outbound? Oh, certs. Certs. Like it's it's not an outbox. Okay, I, I, I added that. Okay. So and then yeah. Alrighty. So um unable to load the CA cert. Why couldn't it load it? Do I not have an interim CSR? Hmm. Let's see here. Maybe I named it wrong. It should be CRL, right? No, it's the requests. Where did I put the root CA? The root CA, it output the root CA at the top here and root.crt. That's a tutorial bug, I have a feeling. The root CRT should be inserts, right? It should, right? Let's prove that. So root CRT should go under in this root CA directory under certs. I'm guessing. Um actually that is defined in the OpenSSL. The open SSL tries to load it from search search to CRT. Yeah. Okay. So that let's confirm that that's not a tutorial bug. I think it might be. I think, I think the tutorial had us make the root thing and it did not have us put it under certs. If I remember right, it might, I'm just checking my mistyping to make sure I did it right. So back to the root creation and the passphrase for the private key out. See this there? See, this is being this is being executed from within the CRT directory. I mean, the root slash slash root slash CA, and in which there is a private root key. So that would be and it outputs a root dot CRT. And then what I should have done there is done certs slash root dot CRT. Uh, there is a step missing here where they moved the root CRT file 
into the search directory uh, based on the configuration. We were just able to confirm that. So, so that is a tutorial bug. Uh, there's a couple of them, but that's a minor one. So, so let's try that step again. And and so so yeah, because we we are not defining any of the other stuff there. And in this case, the output is actually search slash intermediate.crt. So the intermediate search is going to be in the right place going forward, right? Um, yeah, and there's our cert. Okay, so sign the cert. Uh, I don't remember if it said to do that or not. Um, certificate is to be signed until blah. Sign the certificate. Yes. Um, okay, so this is a, we're getting a certificate. Uh, service request to come in and to the CA, the CA, we're signing it. We're telling it we want it. We're signing it with all of our data. Uh, we're actually assigning it a different the data based on the request, which is similar to, but not identical to the CA uh, because we're creating an intermediate cert that's kind of owned by the same sub organization. Sort of like if you were a department within an enterprise that operated within an enterprise that had its own root CA. Um, the subject key identifier, those are the unique identifiers. Um, this is interesting. Um, this is allowing it to be a CA. I thought we turned that off. I thought we turned that off. I think we turned it off for other stuff, but it has to be a CA because it's an intermediate cert. So I'm glad that's there. I just don't know where it came from. Oh, no, 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 no. This is coming from the extension. Yeah, this is coming. Okay, that's what's confusing me. This is coming from the extension section in the openssl.com file for the CA. And that extension says, yes, anytime. And that, that extension came from our dash extension to say, follow these additional additions, put these in, including CA equals true for any request uh, that, you know, we're going to add an extension to make it an intermediate cert, right? So we can actually also make requests using the C of the CA. We have to submit a CSR, but we can also make requests for those other stickets. O O O was it? OCSPs that do not have CAs and all of that stuff. The CA equals true stuff is absent from the extensions that are in the openssl.conf in the interim directory root interim, because that is never going to be handing out CAs. It's only going to be handing out, um, you know, users, user level or, or usage application level certificates and never going to be granting CA access to anything under it. It could. It could. If we wanted to do that, we could. But it's very unlikely. We just only need the one intermediate, uh, depending on how complex your organization is. Right. So so that's why that intermediate step doesn't have its own uh, CA true um, uh configuration uh set in in one of its extension sets okay so so that's good sign it yes uh one out of one certificate requests uh certificate commit yes write out the database with one new entry database updated so i have no idea where the database got updated i assume it's this index.txt file because I, now i have old files um so that's interesting um, this is, this is interesting. Index.txt, ASCII file. I don't know what's in these files, so I want to look. Um, this is interesting. It's like a text-based database. Yeah. Uh, these are the, the keys. Uh, CN, the, okay, the, okay, so the, yeah, RDFX. Oh, so that's specific that got created. So, so it is a, this is a, uh, oh, that's the, the, the identifier, right? So there's this, the country equals US, state equals NC, locality equals Davidson, O, R, D, Rob, common name, that's what it is. And then the email address. Okay. So that's all there. I could have just written that in there, but we're following the steps here. So, um, and then we have the serial. It's interesting that it made a serial dot old too. Why would it do that? Did it make a new serial? Oh, that must have happened when I ran it. 
Yeah, it's, uh, this looks like OpenSSL deliberately doesn't clobber existing files. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's assert signed by the CA. So this is this is all the certs that were signed by this CA. Okay, good to know. Good to know. And this uh, the attributes file. I don't know what that is. Let's go look. Unique subject equals yes. Huh. I don't know what that is, but I don't think I need to know. Anyway, so we got our certs um, and stuff. Database updated. Once a CA signs a cert, it is also copied to the new certs folder. Is it? Yeah. So there it is. New certs. So that would be a directory to back up somehow um, this is all my local network so nobody cares very interesting I, I like that the um, service request the CSR uh, that could probably be deleted now because we just needed it for that one request but we'll keep it around for now once the CI has a stream, it also copies new certs the index database files updated to get a new row from the generator certificate containing status time Time of revocation if revoked, serial, and the subject. Nice. Uh, you can copy a generated certificate to the root of your intermediate CA. Uh, it also creates a chain file containing both the intermediate standards. I, I thought I had to put it in the certs. Why are they putting it at the root? I don't think that, I think it has to go under certs directory. I think that there's some mistake in this tutorial again. Yeah. I actually, I think what actually should be happening here is that, I mean, you can call it interim if you want, but it should, it's technically the root for that other CS. It's actually not the root, so whatever we're going to call it. Root of your intermediate CA, right, right, right. Right, but but the question is, but you generate a certificate of the root of your intermediate CA and also try to create a chain file. Yeah, but it should be putting it in the search directory, in my opinion. That's what I'm saying. So I, I think it should probably not be there. I think it should be, so we go to search interim, right? And I think we need to copy that into... I mean, whether whether you have separate configuration directories for this kind of thing is already kind of a question for me. I don't think it might. I don't think it might be the best way to do this. They're telling me to put it at the top level here. I actually think it needs to go in here um, because I'm going to be signing stuff. I'm going to be making sure the same way I did in the other one. So, um, and then there's also a chain CRT, which is a new file I'm not aware of. Um, you can generate the copied so you can copy the generated certificate of the root. I also create a chain file containing both the intermediate C and its parent. How do you do that? Oh, you cat it on the top of it. This doesn't make any sense. I mean it's not consistent with what they did elsewhere. But Fine. Certs interim C to interim. Um, and then uh, the good old the cat. It's definitely not echo root CRT. No, it's cat. That is like totally wrong. Yeah. That's somebody who made a tutorial really fast. I know. I told you I'm not. I'm not a fan of this. No. What they should have done is cat root crt. Uh, and I don't think. I think the root should be first. Tell me I'm wrong. It doesn't matter what order they come in, but I personally think the root should be first. 
or there's the reason they didn't put the root first is because it's gonna it's gonna read the file from beginning to end and it's gonna see the first entry and it's gonna it's gonna hit more frequently when that chain is used. So maybe you want the root to be down the end. That might be that might be what's going on. I'd be curious to know. Uh, so so yeah. So we're gonna cat. Um, so it's actually no, we don't have to do that. We copied it, and we can copy copy it again to in term not CRT, which is weird. I've never seen that before. And cat sorts root. I mean, once I get a handle on how these files are organized and where OpenSSL expects them to be, uh, which is based on the OpenSSL stuff, .com file, I'll make my own uh, tweaks because I can already tell I'm not I'm not happy with how they're organizing it. But what else is new? Um, interim chain. It's not going to look there for certs. That's the problem. That's what I don't get. Yeah, and this, these are just pen files. So, and the other thing too is it doesn't show which one's root. And only science search should be under slash certs. You think? Did I did I add one that's not signed? I didn't, right? That that's signed with a CA, so my answer to that is that is signed. Is it not? I think it is. It's signed by the CA. That's the whole point of having it, right? So okay. Um let's keep going. Install the root certificate. Finally, don't forget to install your root certificate in your trusted certificate store to make sure your certificates are recognized and trusted. So uh, and this is this is a Windows test tutorial, obviously. It even says so. Uh, and root CRT, interim CRT should be under root, not slash search. And OpenSSL should read from there from from there. It did it though. That's the thing. We just ran it and it didn't see it. It saw it under search because that's what we defined in the OpenSSL directory. You see what I'm saying? I actually think that might be a bug in the tutorial as well. This thing where, see it says certs. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if I agree with this configuration, but now I have something to go on. I didn't know anything about it before today, so. Uh, here we go. The root key and root certificate. Oh, okay. Here we go. So that's why that root dot CRT had to be there. So root looks unique, and then that it had to be there. Three equals search root CRT. I know, but that is. Well, I don't know that yet. Let's go look at the interim one. See what it says. I could have swore it's almost identical. No, it's not. Okay, it has new certs and dir certs, but. No, it hasn't. There it is. Certs interim.crt. That doesn't exist. I copied it in there, but now we have two of them. There's a, there's a problem in the tutorial because now we have an interim.crt in the root. We have interim.chain.crt in the root, and we have certs slash interim.crt. And I think that that one of them is in the wrong place. I and I I I can't confirm that, but. That's 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 my initial impression based on the fact that that step in the tutorial failed. So I think this needs to go. Well, it doesn't need. We just need to remove it. It already is in. Uh, it's already in the source directory. So we already have search interim.crt, and then we have interim.key, and then we have interim.chain.crt, which, frankly, I have no idea. It's just been inconsistent, yeah. I don't know if it requires it to be in there or not, but I think the reason that the required thing was this right here, the root key and root certificates. So this says root, even though it doesn't mean it, because this is an interim, so 
this is the root of the interim. So, so that does have to match, and that means the interim.crt does have to be there despite the instructions in that tutorial. So that's all good stuff. And then we have the private key. Um, that's the private key of that we're going to need to. So that's okay. We need to have the private key in there because we're going to be signing certs and stuff like that. Uh, more likely, we're going to be putting these these this this bit of information into another system. The thing I'm curious about is if is if we're um, I don't think we're going to be dynamically signing in this stuff. If we are, then that passphrase is going to have to be entered. It's going to be annoying. But I don't think that's true. I just think it's a matter of checking signatures on stuff. Root CRT and interim to the root one folder up and remove certs from certificate equals. And then make it just a dot. Is that is that how you've done it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... We could just do this, right? Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. See, but see, Dan, we can't do it because down here we have interim search, right? I'd have to change it. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, though. I, I see what you're saying. No, just in certificate equals. Oh, right. And we have to remove certs. I don't know. I, I can kind of see the value of putting... I can kind of see the value of putting certs here. I, I just think that they've... Uh, it looks like they changed their mind after the fact and put it at the top level. Either that or the reverse, I don't know. I, I need to look around and see what some other people have done on this. See what OpenSSL ex you know, expects and everything. I, I don't want to wander too far from this one, though, until I get it cert actually loaded and using it. But I, I hear what you're saying. I hear your suggestion loud and clear. Um, the, the, the CRT chain... I don't know what's up with the chain file. I, that's just a bunch of PEM files combined together. So, um, so, so the tutorial ends with saying, "Hey, go put it where you need it in your chain," and that's where Keycloak comes in. So this is where Keycloak, not only Keycloak, but um, I'm going to need to add the any system that uses the K login thing, including a localized system is going to have to know about that CA, the root CA. If it doesn't know about the root CA, nothing else is going to work since I made my own. And this is the customization that would normally come uh, by your enterprise desk side. People would put it into your 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 laptops and workstations, stuff like that. Uh, in my case, I'm going to have to simulate that by putting it into uh, a pretend Linux terminal, which, you know, can run from anywhere. So, uh but we but we also have to put that CA into the host OS of the Keycloak server. Uh, as we have the, the root CA at the root, not certs, and have all this stuff signed under under certs. Right. Okay. I mean I, I wish it had let us do that, but it didn't. Um so you're suggesting that certs in terms of CRT should be here. And we ha we don't have any certs that have been signed. And then that would be changing OpenSSL comp to do uh, certificate. That would be, this is the certificate, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying. And this goes away. Uh, that would default to, to, to dot. Right, search so equals dir, which is, you know, <laughs> I I'm just gonna leave search equals dir because I want to see that there. Yeah, and then um, let's go to CA and fix that one. Move search root to here. Move 
Uh, open SSL conf to to this. Actually, no. We still need this to be certs, right? Don't we want it to look for existing certs there? Yeah. I don't know. It's very loud. I'm sorry. Obviously, they're cleaning outside. Um. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. Get rid of this one there. Yeah, let's... Well, I mean... It didn't find it before. So... So maybe that is for the newly signed search. So it does actually have to be a unique location. You know what I'm saying? So it might have actually been right to have it certs. And assuming like new search is a thing that is used too, right? So... Uh, that's a place to go look for existing certs to combine them to. But then there's the main main certificate, the root one, which we put in here. Uh, serial. We 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 did not have all the commands that we were using there. Uh, but yeah. So. So yeah, I assume that's good. Um, a couple things here we need to do. So we have our search now. We've got all our search created. I'm going to go ahead and take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, I'm assuming it's not too late. What time is it? Uh, I'm going to come back. Let's check the calendar again. Oops. We're going to... I, I might not be able to finish all this today. I'm going to be doing some of this tomorrow. Oh, we do have some time. Good. We have another hour. So I'm going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to try to put the search into Keycloak. And authenticate against it um, using, and then add that authentication to the API command lines for our Minikube. We'll be starting at Minikube again, so I'll be doing that in just a second. If you're on YouTube, you could just take you a second. The rest of you, you're going to have to wait a bit. I don't have any, I guess I can turn music on. Tell me if the music's too loud. All right, we are back, and we're going to try to get this certificate into Keycloak. Um, I'm going to have to be doing a lot of doc reading of the docs and documentation and stuff like that. Uh, again, if you are a Keycloak expert, love to hear what you have to say. Can a hypervisor run even without a VTMD unable? I do not know. Good stuff to talk about. You guys can help each other out in there. I'm going to work on the Keycloak thing. So, um, we have Keycloak running in Podman right now. And uh, I, I'm I'm almost positive I can actually go into Keycloak and use the Key Vault um, tool within there to add the certificate, which I've heard is a pain in the butt. But I don't know if that's even the standard way to do it. So we're gonna go look at that. Oh, thank you, Entertainment. Oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go do some research here. Um, how to get key cloak uh, TLS cert. It's got to be part of the standard documentation. It is. Enable TLS. There it is. There's a standard document for this. Um, I'm going to put this in my lab. So follow steps from private save. I don't even want to put those in here, actually. I, the search already the this this document is already covering it all. I should probably repeat it in case that in case that tutorial goes away though. So that might be an exercise that I make for myself, that I can go through from beginning to end, making my own root CA. Um, I need to get good at it. I need to read about it. I need to understand that. I need to master that. Um, and and I'm gonna go ahead and put that in a to do. Um, for myself. Um, create a, um, uh, create a create, uh, root, uh, CA exercise for self and practice. 
I want to get so good at being able to create a Roussier. Um, root and intermediate um, for self and I want to practice that and uh, I'm going to figure out how to do that so I don't think I might do this for now um, that's a, I, I just don't want to leave that I need to come back to that I want that to be fresh information I want it to really be solid um so anyway, key cloak. Let's go back to the key cloak docs. Learn how to configure key cloaks, HTTPS certificates for ingoing, outgoing requests. Um, let's see, develop containers for developing a little OAC provider. So what were the steps we had to do here? So first we had to, uh, we the, the first steps we, were, we created, create a root CA, uh, create uh, intermediate uh, CA. And then we needed to, uh, to use the terminology from the documentation here. We need to configure TLS in Keycloak. Um, we actually, there's another step here that I don't know how to do. Uh, we need to add um, certificates uh, to we can do that after, I guess. That's what these are ones, by the way. So I can move them around. They nail number right because they're using Markdown. Add certificates to uh, required uh, key rings. That's like on the local host or wherever we're going to do that. Configure TLS and key cloak. And another thing here is we're going to have to add uh, a configure. Uh, Minikube to use um, TLS certs and OIDC connect. And uh, that that's the last part. So and then of course then we're gonna write the code to do the to do the key login thing. We don't actually need that for that part, but we need to do it for the testing part. Um, uh, code code key login. To update uh, tilde dot cube config, so that's that's kind of what we're doing. Um, create search. We did that. Create TLS and Kilo. Okay, so back to that. Um, I'm ready to configure it. Wait, add a link to the document here. Uh, I'm just right adding a bunch of stuff here, so I have to go ahead and come back to it. I can find it. All right, so <sighs> I learned how to configure Keycloak so to be a certificates as well as MTLS if you're going to use it. No, MTL, uh, TLS, sort, TLS is crucial exchange data over secure channel production environments, and blah, blah, blah. Configure TLS and Keycloak. Uh, TLS can be configured in Keycloak. Pen format from the Java Key Store. So, uh, a key cloak is a Java thing. Um, see, this is what I find interesting. Providing certificates in PEM format. So, it says it's under bin. Ooh, that might be that might be helpful. All right, so we need to we need to get our key cloak going. So, let's go fire up our key cloak server and Podman. Uh, it's already on there. And we, I think we already have one. Did I kill it already? I think I did. Yeah. So, so we need to fire up Keycloak. Podman. We're running it in Podman. Uh, PS dash A. Crazy Blackburn is our exited Keycloak. So, let's do Podman start Crazy Blackburn. I'm not going to attach to it though. Uh, we will later, but uh, right now we just need to see it there. Uh, let's make sure it's up and answering requests. So it's a 198. There we go. Or is it 8,000? 
Oh no, it's one eight eight at one six. I don't think it's eight thousand. Is it eight thousand? No, it's one nine two. Duh. There we go. Uh, so key cloak here it is. Key cloak's up and running. It's it's answering on our local environment here on our server. So that's good. We got that back. Um, and we need to configure it. Now, the reason I want to do that is because I want to exec into it. And, and uh, um, uh, I want to go in there and look around. So, slash bin. I don't think that there, the documentation said to look for a KC. I don't think there is one here. I don't think it was added to the container. So the instructions are are not container centric, right? So what we have to we need to find the entry point on the on the container. We should probably inspect the container. Let's try that. I might be able to figure that out. Um I'm not I don't do this a lot, so let's let's crazy black one. Let's go ahead and inspect it. Let's see what its startup file is, because that would probably be the same one. Run p start dash dev. All right, so yeah. Um, that was weird. Wait, what? All right, so, I mean, we're still in the CA directory there. Let's call that uh, CA so we don't get confused. Yeah, and then let's make a new one. Go back over. I killed it already, so I'll put it back, key cloak. And message home. Uh, Podman. This is in my history. Yeah, okay. Which uh, starts dash dev. It's so weird that it doesn't have a witch command. It really is. I'm just trying to. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Look what we found. How come this stuff didn't pull up in the search history? Oh, it's an opt key click bin. I did not know that. Well, there we are. Um, I still must know, however, where star dash dev is. There's no find command, you fucking kidding me? <sighs> All right, fine. Um, what is the entry point of the container? I don't, I don't know what it is. No VI? Are you crazy? All right, there's a Java. People when you, people say they want to use their NeoVim. Can't use your NeoVim now. There's not even a pager over here. <laughs> Good thing I have Tmux. Uh, All right, so I rest my case. Does it have Ed? No. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, so we're inspecting this Red Hat container to see what the hell happens when it starts. Is it SigWin? Is it Darwin? Is it FreeBSD? Is it Linux? So they're obviously reusing the same Bash program. Hey, look, it's Bash, not Z Shell. Why should you learn Bash instead of Z Shell? If you want to use Z-Show for your login shell, fine. It's convenient. It has all those pretty colors and stuff by default. But learn Bash anyway. Just don't write Bash like this. This is horrible. Use double brackets. They're much safer. Oh, my God. Please tell me you'll never use this. Oh, my God. Never do that. That is such a 1970s boomer shit to do. To, to put an X in there to compare whether the resolved name actually had a value in it or not. Just use dash Z or dash N. Oh my God. 
that don't do that. That is like a really bad shell scripter trying to write bash code. Uh, can I tell you how much bad bash code is out there that has been written by people who wrote shell code in 1980? <laughs> it's, it's okay. I'm done. I'm done. Move on, Rob. Cat KC and the Sunshine Band. Also, don't put extensions on your scripts. This isn't Windows. Okay, back. I swear I'm back now. The only reason they probably did that... Okay, I take it back. Because this is meant to run on Windows under SigWin. See that? That's why. That's the only reason to put .sh at the end. The only reason. Uh, is because you got to run it on Windows, and that's what SigWin is, even though SigWin is not Windows. It kind of is. D just... And don't don't try to run SigWin. It's horrible. Grep and in 2023, you don't need SigWin anymore. Grep is a grep. <laughs> Directory name is their name resolve name. Uh, what is what is about helper bash files meant to be sources only? I that's what I think. If you're going to source a file, then maybe make a .sh, but that would be the only time I would ever do it. Um. Yeah. Read link Darwin. Is this that's what this is doing, right? It's reading a symbolic link for itself. Wait, what? Wait a second. Oh, it's not a segment, it's a jar file. That's interesting. It has dot bat. That's why, because these were meant to run on Windows. Uh, KC and the admin band. KC .sh. This is not the normal way to do what I'm doing. We should probably be reading the documentation instead of reading the source code, but that's just how I am. I know I waste tons of time doing this waste slash it, to be fair i have caught problems before by doing this that were not in the documentation so it's kind of my go-to thing to do sig path damn um uh server ops this is all the stuff that's going to run the this is a java app so this is firing off the jvm Horkus run that jar that must be the that's the main program what we're looking for is how to input the. Uh, apparently, this this script takes takes arguments, so the reason we're doing this. We can get rid of the template. We don't need that anymore. Uh, we can put key cloak. Uh, key cloak DLS or how. This is telling us that. We need to start, we need to run the kc.sh start command, but we run from a container, so we have to figure out how to pass um, these arguments to it. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to dig into the container and see how to pass parameters to, to the startup, which I think we can actually just do uh, probably from the startup of the command. Um, but we're going to have to stop the container. We're going to have to add these files to the to the to the container. Uh, I mean, this is kind of against the nature of containers as it goes because we're going to be making persistent changes to the container itself. Uh, another thing would be to mount it and then refer to the mount point. But both of those are not. I I I don't know. I don't know. Uh. In Compose, you have command override the entry point. Yeah, yeah, and you can do that in exit too. But I don't, I don't know what. Uh, I mean, another option would be for us to in, install a, a heavier duty um, key cloak that has all that. But I kind of want to use the containerized one because I want to. Ultimately, I want to be able to run a script and just bring up this entire infrastructure every time I need it. I don't want to have it around all the time. So. 
So yeah, we might have to modify that. He quote creates the key store of these files and memories, the key store afterward. Uh, providing a Java key store when no key store file is explicitly configured, but HTTP enabled is set to false. Keycook looks for a conf server dot key store file. Interesting. Uh, that means I I could just put the file there and change the parameter for startup. Yeah. We did start dash dev, which I imagine is the same thing. Yeah, the problem with that is every time we do that, we're throwing away the the previous container, which is how we should be doing it, actually. Yeah. What I want to know is when I fire it up, is it going to mount that file, or is it going to look for that file in the in the container on its own? What I could do is I could do a mount. I could mount. I, this is the thing about Kubernetes I like is you can config files, config maps can be mounts that can be individual files mounted. And I love that. And in this case, we'd have to put them all in the same place to go look for them and then mount them that way. So does that make sense? So, um, yeah, I think I think that's what we're looking for actually. Yeah, you see. Okay, so look at this. This says blah, 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 start, right? I almost can guarantee you that we can pass these parameters to the start command if we have mounted those files into the container when it starts. And I haven't read that yet, but let's try that. So, manual TLS client configuration, because, because the, the start point is start-dev, which mean, which makes me think that the the actual entry point is k is kc.sh and start is the first argument that's passed to it. In fact, let's try that. So if I if I am on one of these remote systems that's got the container on there, if I do podman on there, if I do podman um uh it I'm just curious um and we want to do, what is it called? Um, what images do we have over there? Is it key cloak? Oh, we want run. Derp. Yeah, key cloak. Um, I mean, key cloak will get latest. That should work. I think the default is going to be kc.sh. Yep. Yep, good. Okay, so the entry point is kc.sh, and then we get our options. Good, 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 good. This is all good. And look at that. We can actually pass it a config file, for God's sake. How awesome is that? Those things all have to be mounted, though, because I believe the command is not going to read it from the host OS. Uh, back to Linux from WSL2. Oh, yeah, we're on Linux now. We're on a server. Yeah, yeah, the WSL2 thing was a disaster. Yeah, I I've given it a try and but yet, what yet again I'm more proof the WSL sucks. So um so yeah, we're on KC. So right now we're just we just uh doing a little bit of research to see how the Podman uh instructions for Keycloak startup work and then the entry point is KC Sage and start dash dev was just the, 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 the first level action, which means that we can pass parameters to it. Um the problem I have, though, is that we're going to have to mount. So we can actually run it in TLS. We're just going to have to mount. The podman run statement is going to have to mount the TLS files, the PEM files, or the Java key store, whichever one we want to do, into the running container so that the thing referring to it is going to know where it's at, right? Because if I do, if I follow the instructions here, and we, this is us looking. Oh, I killed it already. That was, that's me inside of the, the running container looking for see what it does. I don't need to know that anymore because I, I know that we're running KC.sh, so that's good. So actually, this entire window can go away. And where's our tutorial? Oh, here we go. Wait, did I kill the tutorial? I think I did. I'm a bad person. Yeah, I did. Damn. All right, so here's the tutorial we were reading. Uh, just to review again. Okay, so... 
we know that the entry point uh, is kc.sh, so we can mess with the rest of it. But see how it says point to a pem file? Well, let me show you what happens when I try to do that with a container. You, most of you know this already, but some of you might not. So if I go to HP, go back onto that machine, it's got Podman on it. And if I do Podman uh, uh, run, I mean, this, this won't work because it'll, it'll conflict. Actually, you know what? Let's close down the other one. We don't need it right now. We don't really need it. Yeah. Actually, we don't need it at all. It's going to tell me, you can't delete it. You're still running. Just do what I tell you. <sighs> Fine. Podman, stop crazy black burn. Podman, RM crazy black burn. We don't need that container anymore because we are going to bake a new one. We're going to bake a new one. Podman. Uh, nope. Where is our... There it is. All right. So this has got all the stuff we want. And it's running start dev, but... So now we can actually look at our tutorial again and see that it gives us, if we want to pass HTTPS certificate file, um, HTTPS certificate. Now, keyfile.pem, how do you make an HTTPS certificate? It, would it be the intermediate CA? And the other thing, too, is that I'm going to need to put the CA on there, too, right? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. All I'm going to need is the PEM file because the PEM file was signed by the root CA. And so this root CA has to be in Kubernetes, visible to Kubernetes and visible to the K login uh, Go libraries. So it doesn't, because it's already been signed by it. So it's going to like say, hey, where can I find this? And it's going to expect it to be there. So that doesn't have to go probably into the container. Um, I just don't know how to make a a cert file for a web server using my root CA. That is the next step. I haven't done that. I'm realizing I need to do it now. So, damn, I, I, was, I thought we had the certificate thing covered. We don't. We still need to get the cert file. Yeah. We need to get the cert key and the cert file. Yeah, which means I'm gonna have to make one of those for the web server. I have an intermediate CA, but that doesn't count, I don't think. Because I didn't put any of the domain name information in there and stuff. Does that make sense? And I don't know how, because I don't do it every day. So, we're going to have to tangent a little bit some more on this. I'm going to say, how do I create a uh, TLS cert for my web server using my own root CA? Uh, self sign serves with a custom root CA. I don't know if this is going to go fast. We'll see. We already have the root stuff. Application gateway trust. I have open SSL, but I don't. I don't know what the what the. I don't know what the lines have to be, Mister Extremely. Do you know what I mean? I know where to do it. So what I'm going to do is sign it with my interim, which I already made. So I have an interim certificate here. Interim.crt, I got my chain, uh, and I got my, we don't have any certs that we've signed in here, right? So that certs directory should be new stuff that we're going to sign. This So someplace in here, I'm going to need to sign a cert, and I probably could use one of the extensions that's already in here um, to do that, but I don't know what it would be. So uh, extensions for client certificates, that's what we want. Uh, User cert smart extensions for client certificates. I think this is what I need, right? Now they put a bunch of MS shit in here because this was designed for Bit Warden or something. Um, server cert. See, that's what I want. I want a server cert. Um, I think that's all I need to do is to do OpenSSL CA config this extensions server cert 
I think that's all I need to do, but I don't know. I've never done it. Um, however, if you have a, a test environment, we've already got our own search authority. I did that. Create a self censored uh, signed by your custom CA. did that. Uh, up, upload a self censored to the application gateway. Yeah, EC, EC parent, what is that about? Create a root cert. Um, use the following command to generate a root cert. We did that already. I wanted to generate the key. We actually did uh, gen or something different. Uh, I still, th I think it counts as self sign. I do, but what I'm what I'm unsure of is it didn't ask me what my domain is, so I don't know what extension parameters are needed to do to have to make it so that it validates the domain. You know, that's one of the reasons I I want to make a server cert that validates anything for home dot rdbx.gg. Uh, uh, mimic of enterprise stuff. That's right. Yeah. So the CSR is um, a public key that is given to a CA when requesting a cert. CA issues a certificate for that specific request. Uh, the CA and common name for the cert certificate must be different from the issuer's domain. For example, in this case, CA for the issuer. This is see see this is this is the piece I'm missing. Um. Okay, so I have to make I have to make a CSR. Okay, that makes sense. We have to make a a, a cert request, a certificate service request. We have to compose a cert for service request to the intermediate CA that's been signed by the root CA, uh, pretending like that intermediate CA has been set up for my sub department within the company, and and then I'll get a server certificate and a client cert. I'll get that as well. Um, yeah, so. When prompted, type the password for the root key and the organizational information for the custom CA, uh, region state, org, OU, or the fully qualified domain name. And a fully qualified domain name. See, that part is what I'm missing. So, yeah, that's the part I'm missing. So, for, first of all, why is it using ECPRAM for the private key? Why can't I just use the same gen thing for the private key? Is that a different kind of thing? Uh, so we need to generate a private key for a new certificate. Uh, create the certificate's key. Yeah, the certificate's open using open a cell. Yeah, this isn't root stuff, is it? Oh, we already did this. No, that's okay. Those first two steps are for the root. Create a server cert, and create the certificate's key. Yeah, you have to do the certificate. You have to always have to make the key first. And then using the key, you can make this request, and then you can send the request with the key, and then you can send the request to the intermediate, and then that will give me that will fulfill the request by generating a cert that's been signed by the intermediate CA. Uh, I don't know. It's a Microsoft one. Learn Microsoft something something. Um, the CSR is a public. It doesn't matter. It's all the same stuff. The CSR is a public key that is given to the CA when requesting certificate. CA issues a certificate to the specific request. Common name for the this is that this is where things get interesting. Okay, the common name for a server cert that's been signed by an intermediate CA is what matches the HTTP request for a specific server domain. And even though I've mapped a, a an external DNS name to an internal 192 IP, which is totally fine, uh, this has to match. And this is where we get into the question of wildcards and versus the actual domain name, stuff like that. And I know generally that this is related, but I don't know exactly what to do. Uh, the idea is not to communicate via HTTPS, uh, not to create a trusted authority for the handshake. Yes. Uh, uh, so the CN for the server certificate must be different from the issuer's domain. Really? I don't remember putting a domain in the CA. Should I have put a domain in the CA? I didn't. I just put it. I just. I think that might have been a mistake, actually. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. The common name probably has, does include the domain, but it didn't include it in either of my CAs. And somebody said you don't need that in your CA in your common name for the CA, for the root CA or the intermediate CAs. They don't have any domain name information in them. Period. That's what someone said, and I. So that would leave the creation of server, you know, signed certs signed by the root CA or the immediate CA, those are the ones that have the domain name in the common name. And I don't know how to add that. That's what I'm focusing on. Um, so, so let's see, common name, certificate. the common name for the server certificate must be different from the issuer's domain. That's, that's implying that you, you set an issuer domain in your intermediate CA, which I do not have. For example, in this case, the CN for the issuer is, uh, and the server certificate in CN is www, blah, 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 blah. Right. And that would be, so like if I, if the root CA that I made had a primary domain, I would have put that in my common name. It makes me wonder how many enterprises actually set an issuer domain in their root CAs. And I, there's no way I can know that. I can, I can look at my company's root CA and see if it has it in there. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know if it hasn't. Either way, this is just noting that it has to be different. Okay, I, it's definitely going to be different because it doesn't exist in mine. Um, so that we're fine there. Use the following command to generate the CSR. The request CSR. This is the certificate service request. Open SSL request new SHA two fifty six. No, we're going to do SHA five twelve. Duh. Uh, key. Uh, Fabricam. This is already a shitty tutorial. I can already tell. Uh, key. Key Fabricam out uh, CSR. Okay, so that's going to be the thing. It's going to make the CSR. It's going to get handed off to the intermediate CA for signing. Um, but this has us put. Yeah, we have to make the private key. That's not too hard. Um, the CN for C is usually a description like global sign. And that's what I was just saying, LBG, right? So, so, so would you agree that this statement is kind of dubious here? It says here, the CN for the service certificate must be different from the issuer's domain. Well, obviously it's going to be different than the domain because it's a common name rhetorical CN, right? I feel like this statement is based on less than, you know, full competence. <laughs> Did I say that? That was a nice way to say it, right? <laughs> you don't put a host name in a CACN. Not sure exactly what they're doing there. Yeah. No, they're trying to say that the that the server certificate must be different than the issuer's domain. So this 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 little tutorial here tells you how to make a root CA in like a paragraph, and then it proceeds to tell you how to make a server serve from it. Actually, a CSR first and then the thing. So yeah. Anyway, um, we're we're uh, a link to this. It's Microsoft. I don't know if that is a reason. I'm trying to find a definitive resource about how to do certs. Um, if anybody has one, I am all ears. Uh, if somebody has got their their favorite that they like. I, this is just the stuff that showed up first, and I'm not a Microsoft fan, of course, but I just certs are largely the same across the board. Uh, it just depends on what you're reading. Um, so, so there you go. That is the the thing. I'll put that in the notes, show notes, not show notes, but here, yeah, a link. Uh huh. If, I'm sorry if you're on YouTube, you're gonna have to type it in. Uh, Googling for gist helps. Oh, I Google all over the place. You found a good one? Yeah, gists are usually really good. Yeah, this looks really good. Let's add this just to the list of resources in our lab, which is how I keep sane. Um, yeah, we already did that one. Generating custom cell sign certs. We already did that one, right? Oh, no, we didn't. We didn't do that one. Here, let me do the other one. So anything that I have used will be in the lab. 
including this gist, which somebody just found for us. This is why this is one of the reasons I stream this. In case you haven't noticed, when I stream it, I get a lot of help for free from friends on Twitch. Um, create root key. Uh, CA done once. We did that already. See, I don't use Gen RSA. We we did we use Gen RSA? No, we did because it was 2056 encryption. That's right. So Gen RSA is the way to go. That Microsoft thing has us do another one. EC Param. I'm not doing that. No, I look. No, bye bye. Bye bye. Where's it? Did I close the gist already? Damn it! Oh, there it is. Um. No, there's two. It doesn't have it in that one. It's a different, different one, different one. Yeah. So what I'm trying to get at. Okay. So LBG, I think I know you. You know this, but now I need to provide a domain. So I need to make this, this server certificate, and I missed that step, and I, I got anxious and started cloaking a key cloak. Key cloak wants me to point to the PEM file for the server cert, and I don't have it yet. So that's what I'm working on making now. So, uh. This is the key uses to make a root CA root. Yes, this part I know. We did this today already. Um, what about nodes? I don't know about that. Key root CA key. Yep, that I can do that. Fine. Create and sign. We already did that. Create a certificate done for each server. So I think I can do this step with the intermediate CA, which is what I want to do. Uh, yeah, make a private key. You got to have a key first. Oh, wow. Okay, so that has a domain key name. Interesting. Okay, 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 okay. Why is it in 2048? I wonder, if, I thought 2048 was the only thing. Anyway, um, I know what to do. We're going to make the key for this, and I'm going to make the the key creating and signing a CSR. The secret signing request is where you would specify. Uh, so yeah, uh, and then we submit the CSR to the intermediate uh, CA using the private key. Uh, that's going to make the CSR okay. Uh, signed by the the private key, and okay, I'm I'm getting the steps in my head. This is good. The method, and then, uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. The same out and pass method A, but is suitable for use in your automation. Uh, my org inc. Request new. This is what? Please mind that creating the signing request is important to specify the common name provided by the IP address and domain name for the service. Otherwise, the certificate cannot be verified. That's the part I'm afraid of. <sighs> CN equals domain.com. So the rest of this stuff can be exactly like mine. And... And so that is the common name is where it gets synced up. As PFX, really? I did not know that. Thank you. Uh, you have to combine the certain private key and then feed it. Oh my god. Yeah, I did not know that. Thank you for reminding me not to use Microsoft or anything. Uh, I will never go on Azure because of that now. From that one thing. <laughs> I will never use Azure, even though they offered me an Azure sponsorship. They did. Mm. I, no. No. There's no reason to break things like that. That, no. No. Um. <laughs> I know. So, anyway, I'm sorry for you. I mean, I'm sure you're... I, I, there's, look, whatever. I, I'm not attacking anybody. I'm just saying I'm not using Azure. That's all I'm saying. Uh, open SSO request new SSH 56 key my domain dot key. I'm, what, the key part of the, the, okay, the piece that I keep missing here, and I, I honestly, I think I'm going to have to look at source code to understand it, is I want to know 
what is it about an Nginx web server, for example, that associates the certificate with the request for a virtual server or a domain specifically a, a for a domain server and and how does that handshake take place how does the lookup happen and that specific piece of this puzzle is something that i'm still missing and i i i'm probably gonna have to look at code to see what happens something about the server that's can the server key is used to associate it with something on the on the maybe not actually maybe all that's done is just a validation of the ca and then it and then it's trusted after that and they create the temporary token i think that i actually i think i might be overthinking it yeah i think i might be overthinking it. there's not there's not there's not a lot to do there uh so but but minimally the request for a domain a tls uh, encrypted domain uh is going to look up from the key store on the on the server it's going to look up this domain name and i don't know if this other stuff's going to have to fly as well so so that's the part that i am i'm not completely clear on and apparently that stuff is set in the csr uh to the, the intermediate CA in this case. So if you need to pass additional config, you can do with config param, uh, rec extend send config, uh, cat open SSL config. That's some pretty magical stuff to do there. I wouldn't do that, but if you're gonna script it, that's one thing you could do. Yeah, there we go, see this right here? Subject alt name DNS colon blah 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 DNS blah blah blah. The host name has to match the CN. For server certificates, the host name has to match the CN. Does it have to match this CN? Or can it match these alt name DNS stuff? You see what I mean? Yeah, I think I think this is I think we're getting on to what I want to know here. So if you have C names, they're subject alt names. See, that's the piece I was missing. Uh huh. So I'm pretty sure that's it. This is some fancy. This is some fancy ass bash here to create the file open ssl.cnf and then pass that file at its current location off to the config that's what that's doing it's doing it into two steps yeah any of these right and ingress uh injects ingress pod with a cert manager pod you see the full client let's that's just done by let's encrypt yeah people have suggested that but i want to run my own ca i want to do this as a modeling my own ca uh, let's encrypt CA. Root CAs uh, are not sufficient. They don't let you do enough. I wish it did. The intermediate search you get from let's encrypt are not good enough. Um, they're not good enough to to, to simulate a, a um, this kind of thing. You definitely could do that, but um, I again, as I said, I'm mimicking to use somebody else's word um, an enterprise environment with a root CA, and that's going to mean, I know, it's going to mean updating the root CA on all the tools that use it, including my key rings on the clients, um, which is part of what I need to test. That's why I need to do this. One of the, the main thing that I need to test is activating TLS validation for a custom root CA for an enterprise for a globally applied application that does Kubernetes configuration and alters and updates to that cube config file and with TLS validation enabled. And so when it does TLS validation, in order to do that, I have to simulate what it means to have a root CA uh, having done. So I have to do all this other stuff to even do the test. Um, I could attempt this test at home on my laptop or on my work laptop over VPN, but I also want to understand all the pieces in the, in the puzzle here. So when I go looking at our root CA, I can go deal with all that. Um, Certbot sadly doesn't create certs for local websites and apps. Otherwise, it'd be easier. I, I remember Certbot. I use Certbot for all of my Let's Encrypt stuff. 
yeah i used to use i used to use surfbot all the time for helping um mostly kids get websites up and stuff like that and there's a lot of help there to take care of that but but frankly that's been you know glossing over the stuff i need to understand and as confusing as this is and these questions that i'm having right now about how the association between the cert and the domain is done those have been things that i've wanted to know for decades uh, since the first time I used a VeriSign cert at Nike and Nike.com uh, back in 96 or something, 7. <coughs> um, so, uh, something, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm learning a lot too. I mean, this again, this is, you know, uh, trying to get into it. So, um, and I've been, you know, ripping this apart uh you know, very slowly over the last three or four days. And we'll be over the weekend, by the way. This is something I personally am going to be doing over the weekend, even though it's, I'm not getting paid for it over the weekend. It's stuff I want to understand. Uh, and it's related to my job, so it's one of those gray areas, right? And you'll find that that's a common thing in the tech industry, is that um, sometimes it's hard to know if you're like me and you're constantly asking, is what am I doing worthy of being paid for? Um, you'll constantly, as you as you come to learn in this career, that you're constantly it's not it's kind of a combination of imposter syndrome plus conscience like am i you know a certain amount of of learning is assumed and included in what you have to do and then there's a certain amount of expertise that's expected of you uh to already know and stuff that you know and balancing how deeply to go in understanding a particular thing in order to get your job done uh is a constant constant like tipping of the scales in one direction or another and on the one hand you'll have the very extreme case where you won't learn a single thing that you feel like you should already know on the clock right and if you're a salaried employee it's not an issue i'm a contractor so i'm yeah, it's the first time i've been hourly um and on the other hand you have like everything that i ever do belongs to the company including thoughts i have during dreams at night which you actually sign off away when you sign up to work for ibm for example and and so anything you do doesn't matter, you know. Uh, it's all about did you make your deadlines like that. But if you're over on the hourly side, or you're doing contract work, then you have to say, okay, well, is this is this a, a quote valid use of my time since I'm billing for it, uh, or is this something I should already know? And it, it is it is a really ethical uh, wrestling match uh, for me as a technologist who tries to be a you know operate in the best of good faith uh and who also gets sucked into interesting learning uh rabbit holes that do have relevance ironically i want to say this my wife is fun, fond of reminding me of this some of these rabbit holes that i end up going down like learning how to do my own open ssl certs and management which is not strictly speaking it's kind of on the middle about whether i should do this or not right i should just use the certs that already exist and do it all on my laptop uh, from work, but but then I, I lose the opportunity to understand and, and and this is inevitably one of those things where you know like in a month or two something radically significant is going to go down. It's going to break in our search chain, and I'm going to be instantly called on, kind of like a firefighter to come put the firefighter out. And so basically pumping iron a little bit in open SSL in advance helps me to deal with saving the child later. <laughs> You know what I mean? This this job is a firefighter job. This job is a first responder job in many ways. And you can't, you know, save puppies and children if you don't understand, you know, you're not strong enough to get into the house to be able to do it. And so then what do you have to do? At that time, then there's too late, right? It's too late to learn everything you have to know to, to make sense of this absolutely broken, archaic, you know, multi-level search chain that you have adopted in your enterprise for some stupid reason and you can't even you don't even know it's bad because you don't understand it so i hope this this little rant that i just did is helpful to someone because that 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 is the constant challenge for particularly for people who are honest and for people who want to do a good day's work for a good day's pay you know all those old-fashioned middle middle you know class values and you know they don't they they just they're hard to 
to to to to to put in a it, it's more like you're a lawyer or a doctor and you have to constantly keep your skills up even though you're not directly being paid to keep your skills up for that exact amount of time it's assumed that you're going to keep the skills up so much so that as a technologist you're assumed to know everything and there's no way you can know everything right and if you and if you go to your boss and ask for training yeah screw that that's not happening right so the modern take on this at least for most modern uh, management teams is that that's built in or they give you they give you friday to go do your learning uh the stuff that's kind of more in the gray area on, on fridays actually they say you can work on anything you want uh at all literally as long as it's technology related or something like at google that's what they do they do that everywhere by the way at ibm it's called think friday uh every ma every major company does that and and they actually really want you to go outside of the box in your thinking and the and your side projects to kind of push the envelope and to discover those you know yak shaving kind of things that you could find that are going to provide value for that company that you might not have even thought of. That's how innovation happens. Innovation is a creative process. It doesn't have a lot of stress involved. And so if you want your if you want creativity from your tech people, you got to give them space. But you also have these fires that need to be put out and these immediate priorities, and that's the polar opposite of giving them space and that balance is a part of the culture of being a tech employee that's all i have to say about that uh i quit my system job because i got me to sort of press they call it fat friday oh they, they you guys have it for fat it's called fat friday uh yeah and is that's hardcore stuff yeah they have they have to pay to learn new stuff too uh you can only learn remember so much and yeah and then you, it becomes out of date yeah, and then you know you get old, and you get you know you get you get a little bit of ageism built into the system, like you know, and and you have to deal with your biases based on what you learn first and what what's new and what you don't know and all this stuff. It it's 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 a challenge. It's a challenge. And, and on a Friday, you know, on a, late on a, at four forty four on a Friday, I don't mind calling out this challenge because that's what Fridays are for. Fridays are for you. Uh, I, I don't know a company on the planet that I would ever consider working for that does not give you Friday to figure stuff out that you don't have time to figure out in other time frames. Now, this is why I am diving so deeply into open SSL certs in addition to the immediate requirement I have to write TLS validated K login uh, cube config generation. I mean, that's a pretty dense sentence, but that's that's why I'm doing this. Um, so, so, so. If you're trying to get into this, you know, just just know that that imposter syndrome and am I am I am I worth my money is an ongoing challenge. And and if you know, if you're if you're doing a relatively fair and the other problem too is like working from home, right? It's like should I be literally stressing and biting my knuckles reading something for 8 total hours? Some people would say yes, other people would say I don't know, would you be doing that if you were on site? And so you have, you know, like Am I giving, am I producing value for my customer? I will tell you the single greatest way to get a handle on this is number one, work for an amazing team. Work for a team that works with one another, that supports each other on and off the clock, that, that, that has a manager who gives you extreme amounts of latitude for the sake of the safety of the team. Number two, that, that, that manager is willing to meet with you regularly so you can ask the question, Am I producing value to the expectations you would have of me as a member of your team? If you have that and you regularly have those meetings, and I do, my managers kick ass and it gives us tons of latitude to do our own thing, but also allows us a regular, you know, not quarterly, but you know, like a, a biweekly or so uh, opportunity to say, hey, am I still producing value based on the priorities you have for the team or, or are my priorities out of sync? Right. I think I think that's the core of the issue. The core of the issue is when you have a team member whose priorities get out of sync with what the team actually needs as defined by the people who run the team. And that's when problems happen. Problems happen when something you feel needed attention. Uh, oh, I don't know, like auditing all your Kubernetes apes for secret passwords and, and secrets and passwords that are stored in GitHub wide in the clear for everybody to see within your enterprise, which I happen to think is a high priority, right? Um, <laughs> 
I'm laughing because that actually happened. So I had to prioritize that and I had to ask is, okay, do you guys agree that this is more important than, and then, and every once in a while, you know, things will fall apart in an operations team and nothing will work. And all of a sudden that takes priority over your, you know, kick ass, you know, next version of your API integration as a platform engineer, which is kind of a dual role, a dual, you know, two hats or three hats that you wear. Uh, if you're involved in middleware in a company and it, like I am. So sometimes you've got the operator hat on, sometimes you got the developer hat. That's the definition of SRE, according to Google. And so anyway, Friday 2246 here, and I'm still grinding tech. <laughs> we got a thing called a lab, and we can work on a POC of our choice to which we can allocate three to five days, a days per sprint. Oh, that's cool too. That's a different way of doing it. I didn't know about that. Uh, instances representing servers in a certificate. Oh, I want to look at that one. Let's go take a look at that. Thank you, allowing for me to have a little bit of a, of a, it's kind of a, you know, a, a rant, masturbatory rant, like they say, self-indulgent. It's a much more vile way to say self-indulgent. <laughs> I can't remember who, the first time I heard that. This is a great way to say it, though. What are we reading here? Uh, representing Riveting servers in a TLS certificate. Yeah, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Oh, LVG is there for me again. Always got the answers. That's why I'm here, man. Make friends. Join a join a group. Join a group of people that are smarter than you. And you'll you know you'll you'll have your own golden nuggets of wisdom and insight. Don't think that it's all about listening to better people that are smarter than you. Sometimes. Sometimes you're going to be the smart one making a nice comment. And there's nothing. that's what meritocracy is about. And in tech, meritocracy is king. You can say whatever you want. But in tech, the people who actually know shit have the power. They really do. They might not make the money, but they have the power. <laughs> uh, they're for IBM product, yeah. You're once given two weeks for a quick and dirty POC. Almost burned out completely. Manners should be there to help. I agree. There was one time when I was on a really boring job uh, doing Tivoli uh, endpoint management uh, for IBM, and we had to literally copy and paste all this crap into this horrible web interface. And I begged my manager at the time. I said, can I please have two days to show you a POC of how we can do this entire thing without having to cut and paste anything? And, and I made it, I made it and I showed it to them and they were like blown away and they used it on the team for the rest of the time after that. Um, and, and I got to tell you, I, you talk about burnout because I knew I only had two days to do it. So, you know, I just, I worked 24 seven on that thing, uh, to get it out there. But sometimes having a fire under you is nice too. You know, I, I, it was kind of like a hackathon, you know? You know when people have hackathon hackathons and they have like, hey, this is the thing we're gonna make, and it's not a necessarily a game. I mean, I, I got nothing against game development. Most of this category I'm in right now is all game development, uh, but but there's definitely um, a, a need for for coding that's not games. Just putting that idea out there. Um, anyway, so let's go read this. Let's go back to the task at hand. Uh, might be time for a break, but I don't want to take one. I, I I'm getting ready to go home for Friday actually. Yeah, I'm, we're getting close to wrapping up. I, I want to go get ready. I'm going to go have some fun with my wife and my friends. Uh, eat, drink, and be merry kind of thing. Um, and I f feel like I want to read this tutorial, and then that will be the end. So I want to get... I, I would really love to end this stream by having a server certificate that could be used for HTTPS that I could even test with an Nginx container really quick. That's something that I would really like to be able to do. Um and frankly, you know, I just kind of outlined what I probably should do before I set this up for key, for key cloak. Um, you know, theoretically, this root CA that I just made, I should be able to use that and add that to my localized web browser here and, 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 and to my keychain uh, on my machine and, and ensure that my root CA actually works with just a generic, you know, web request. Uh, and then, you know, host some simple web page that's TLS uh, validated using the root CA that I've added and then add that root CA um, to my local, you know, Windows or Mac uh, to validate that my server certs are actually good. And once they're good, then I can take those same certs and put those into the key cloak so that I have isolated 
I've, I've established that that cert is good. It actually works as a, you know, a client server cert for web authentication, uh, TLS kind of uh, termination, stuff like that. And then, then, then I'll know that if something goes wrong and it's key cloak or something, it's not my cert. That's, that's probably a better controlled way to do that. In fact, I'm glad I talked about that because uh, I'm going to finish reading this tutorial and I think I might abandon getting Keycloak to work um, because we still have to deal with like loading the pem file. It, it might be that it just starts up with the pem file stuff. And so let's look at that. I still have to get the pem file embedded into the container uh, or, mount, or mount those volumes, mount those in a disk drive and then have the thing run that way. Uh, uh, but don't please. <laughs> Uh, go and enjoy life. The cert won't go anywhere. I, yeah. Um, all right. Let's see here. Okay. So open SSL, uh, in my domain.csr. I think you're right. Uh, generate the certificate in my key domain. Yeah, this is, this is a good, this is a good, 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 uh, thing to have. It's in my lab as well. So I'll come back to it. Um, all right. So one last read, I want to read this, uh, TLS thing from IBM real quick. It's always one last thing, right? But let's go until five. Uh, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. So if in the meantime, some of you want to find somebody to raid, let me know. And uh, again, we'll be back tomorrow for uh, Beginner Boost. I won't be back tonight, though. That's for damn sure. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I can't, I can't even click on the right thing now. That's how tired I am. Using a common name. Um, let's see. The subject alternative. This, if a subject alternative name, a SAN, oh, it's called a SAN. That's what SAN said for. I did not know that. <laughs> to paste the certificate inside a container, right? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah, we're not doing that. We're going to, so, okay, so key cloak, we want to short, short, stop short of having to set up an entire key cloak deployment. We want to use the containerized version of it. So we're going to, we're probably going to mount a share drive, a shared file location, and then we're going to put the pem files in there and then pass those as arguments to the start dash dev for the container so that Keycloak fires up with TLS termination using the, using the service that we've created. We're very close to that, actually. Um, and and that's that's based on, on uh, the information that we're reading, I think, over here. I uh, know this is different. Uh, I don't want to use that one at all anymore. That was a bad one. Um, that's the no. That's not it either. So, is it this one? Yeah. Here we go. So, so we know that the KC.sh is the entry point for the for the Podman container that it uses for Keycloak, and instead of using start, we do start dash dev. Um, so it it follows that it will then take these arguments to the Podman start command. Uh, but because these are referring to path to cert file dot pm pem file, first of all, we have to have a pem and a key file. But we need to make those. But then once we do make them, we're also going to have to add mounts because I don't believe that Podman will automatically see those files from the host OS. Does it? It doesn't, right? Does anybody know that? That's a pretty basic container question. Let me ask that question again. So when it doesn't, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean that's the whole point of a container, right? So let me let me restate that again for people that don't know about containers and just from my own understanding. When you so this this works if you're calling it from the same machine, but as soon as you use bin, you know, KC as an entry point, even if the start command is there, this start command and all of its arguments will be passed to the kc.sh program running inside the protected container. That means if you have put a path here to a local host on which you're running the container to a file, it will not see it, right? It won't see it because these arguments are relative to the inside of the container. So in order for us to, you know, not have to do a full setup for this key cloak thing and still use containers, but to also, you know, simplify the process by using a pem file to key file and a cert file, then what we need to do is we need to add a dash V to volume mount something and put those files in there and then adjust these parameters to point to those files at that location, which will then be mounted from the host system inside of the container. Right? So, 
so 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 that is where we are and 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 I need so I need to create the the cert file that pem file and the key file that pem file and from what I'm reading right here or I can create a key store if I wanted to using uh, JavaScript which is the same thing same same idea I still have to mount it right um, and this would be the password to get into the key store file so so then I can take all this information that's relative to overall running of Keycloak on a you know in a larger environment. And and I can containerize it and mount those volumes. So so that's where we are. Um, and I don't know how to make a cert file pem, and so I'm going to read about it, and then I'm going to come back at it. Actually, that might be a good summary for me to just end on, um, to 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 state what we're going to do next. Um, we did get our root CA created today, and we got our intermediate CA created, and that was awesome. Um, so I feel like that was a huge. Thing. I learned a lot about OpenSSL. I learned a lot about SS, you know, about TLS stuff. Um, unfortunately, I still don't have a server cert because I don't know what has to be in the server cert, and um, you know that's the hard part of this. Uh, and we have you know different tools here. So the CN here, uh, the common name, uh, the issuer's common name. Okay, so this is actually interesting. So oh, this is really interesting. Thank you, LBG sent this. I want to re want to recap on this. So as LBG was saying, and as was incorrectly noted in a previous tutorial that was hosted by Microsoft, the issuer, the CA, is is going to have a common name that is something spoken, right? So my my root CA and my intermediate CA are RDBX Rob space CA and RDBX Rob space ICA. Uh, and the ICA is just an intermediate CA. That's not anything particularly that they would use. Um, my re the reason I have an intermediate is I'm I'm emulating a sub department within an organization where the root CA is the all powerful king and the and an organization wants to have its own cert under that uh, because that's more likely the thing you would encounter in the wild and then and then the server certs that have a CN that matches a domain name including wildcard domains which is a separate topic that I don't even want to crack open right now um, the it, the the difference appears to be and I'm, you know, still unclear on this, that the subject, uh, that the CN of the cert that's issued will actually specifically match the domain name in the request. And in our case, that would be not 192.168. You can put IPs in there if you want, but we want to put a host name in there. And I have deliberately registered home.rdbx. Uh, .gg, another, it's a kind of a fun thing to do to put home in front of one of your domains you already own uh, because then you can use localized domain names for things like that. that's what I'm doing. And then I can do 8080 here and and it should go to it. Oh, I, did I turn it off already? Yeah, I turned it off. Uh, I, I turned mine off. I can turn it back on in a second. Let's just do it. I just want to turn it back on so people can see. So podman ps oh home podman ps Podman, uh, start, is it Sweet Archimedes? Okay, so this should work now or not. What am I saying? There it is. All right, so, so God, let's turn back on the dark, dark mode, huh? Dark mode, please. Dark mode, please. Oh, my God. Dark mode, where are you? Why well, want dark mode work? Because it's home to art of yesterday. I am so sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> I want my dark mode. I want my dark mode. Forging certificates is another thing. That if you want to learn how to forge certificates. Anyway, you see how this says home.rdbx.gg? You know why? Because we registered that. Even though it's a local it's a local DNS name, we we registered it because we wanted to use certificates that had domain names in them instead of IPs. And so, so we are now set for the next step, which I guess I'm going to have to do tomorrow, uh, which is uh, creating a certificate service request, a CSR for the that will submit to the intermediate CA, and will include a common name that matches home.rdbx.gg, and then that should give us a PEM and a private key file. Uh, files that we can then mount into our running Podman container for Keycloak, and we should be good. They should also work for any sort of like 
um, server validation that I want to use for my new Pretend CA, uh, which I'm probably going to want to do anyway because I need to go through the steps of adding a, a, a custom root CA to uh, a local uh, laptop. And I don't know how to do that. Um, I know that can be done. Um, desktop, desk side people do it all the time. Uh, that's something that I would like to do with my internal systems. And actually, because I, I, I really want to emulate uh, an environment that way and, um, and be able to issue my own certs so that my home systems when I'm doing testing, uh, including my, my own um, uh, endpoints and Kubernetes nodes and stuff like that, and pods can use by domain name. They can use externalized domain names first when they need to go outside the cluster, which they normally don't have to do. Um, but I still would like to be able to do that. So that's been it for today. Let's go ahead and find somebody to raid. Um, when we pick up tomorrow again is the boost, just a reminder, tomorrow is the beginner boost at 11, 11. If I do anything later tonight after I drink, it's going to be planning the content for tomorrow. But, um, I spent some pretty extensive time, uh, updating the skillsec.io overview, uh, to contain what's going to be next. I did that last week. So uh, the overview now has a lot more stuff in the outline, uh, and it is chronological. So uh, we're going to be um, probably, uh, we are going to pass to have completion. We're, we're going to be uh, talking about Linux file ownerships. We're going to get into Octal a little bit. Uh, we're going to do research from links. I don't know if we're going to do screen first. One of these, I don't remember which one it is, but if you want to get going, I also did a time estimate that which turns out to be 32 weeks to two hours a day a week. So we're going to be finishing in the first week of December. If you want to jump in and go into the overview. So join us for skillsec.io tomorrow uh, for the beginner boost. And I'm going to go ahead and end the YouTube video now. I'm going to go raid somebody. It's great having you.